Good morning. You all look so nice today. You just got to look at somebody and say, you look good. Tell them right now. Let's start it right. All right. Some of you almost look like you meant it, too. So glad that you are here. Let me tell you something to start things off today. Today is a little bit different. I'll explain how in a moment. But let me say the word vision. Vision. Did you know that God has a vision for his church, that God has a vision for Black Hawk Ministries, but did you know that God has a vision for your life? God has a plan, and he is not finished with you yet. Some of you came today just to hear that, not from me, but from Jesus himself, because he looks at your heart and says, I'm not finished with you yet. And so today we're going to talk about vision and that vision that God does have. And I want to say hey to a part of that vision, a part of that family vision, our extended family. We have a big family in the room, but we have a big extended family that goes far beyond who we can pack in this building, watching us online, streaming on television or at home, in your PJs, whatever that looks like, or maybe you'll watch this down the road. Thank you for being a part of our family. I'm glad to be a part of this family with you. It excites me. It excites me to know that God has a plan and a vision today. If you've got your Bibles, look at Ephesians chapter 4 with me. Ephesians chapter 4, New Testament, fourth chapter of Ephesians. The Apostle Paul writes this to us. We've got notes for you in your bulletin. You can take notes through our church app. If you don't have that, I highly recommend it. I use it all week myself. You can download Blackhawk Church app, and you can find sermon notes and everything else there as well. But join me as we dig in today. Let's look at Ephesians 4, and as we look at Ephesians 4, verses 11 through 16... I take you here for a reason. I take you here because back in August, August the 21st of last year, 2016, uh, was the first sermon I preached from this stage, from the pulpit here at Black Hawk Ministries. And I was challenged not to preach the best sermon that I had in my list of sermons, but to preach from my heart who I am as God's called to lead within his church, a shepherd under the shepherd, the good shepherd of Jesus. And I led you to Ephesians chapter 4, and I want us to go back to Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 16. Anybody ready for the word this morning? Let's start by just diving in there. Verse 11 talks about the church, and I think a great vision snapshot of what God has for his church. By the way, Jesus is building it. It's his church, and he even said the gates of hell can't prevail against it. That's something I want to be a part of. Can I get an amen? amen? Verse 11, the Apostle Paul says, And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds and teachers to equip, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until we all attain the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Such a rich passage. Verse 14, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful schemes. You ever run into any of that in this world? I'm glad we have a foundation. Verse 15, rather speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped. When each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. And everybody said, love that passage. We're going to come back to it and unpack it. And our vision that I want to unfold in front of you today is a little bit different. If you're a guest with us, we do this once a year. And this is going to be our annual Vision Sunday. And so if you're a guest, you do need to know it is a unique Sunday at Black Hawk, but it's also a great day to be a part of what God is doing at Black Hawk because we are going to reminisce. We're going to look at the things that God has been up to but mainly we're going to zoom in on the things that God is doing and all the things he wants to do because he's not through with you yet and he's not through with our church. He's just getting started. On August the 21st, as we looked at this passage, I gave you four words and I want to give you those words again. They're in your notes and we're going to unpack these as we go today. The first word is releasing. It's a church that is four things, releasing, a church that is reaching, a church that is relational, Building on the relationships just like Jesus did, and then a church that is refreshing. Somebody say, 
<sighs> Could you use some refreshing today? We've got a lot of ground to cover, a lot of information that I'm going to throw your way, but my number one prayer is that you are refreshed by being a part of God's church today because He's got something for you. And to start that today as we look at this passage, I want us to look at uh, what God has been doing. What has God done? What has God done? Let's look at that. And it has been an amazing several months here at Blackhawk Ministries, has it not? God has been moving. He's been changing lives. And so I want to show you a few of the things, just some highlights. We could never go through all of them, but to God be the glory for all the great things he has done. Let's go through a few of those. Gifts that go is one that we won't have on the screen, but we raised over $50,000 at the end of last year that went straight out. It went gifts that go out to our missionaries and supported people that are spreading the gospel up and above our normal giving. You gave generously to that. Speaking of those things, you gave over $150,000 towards our existing debt in less than six months' time. Go ahead. <laughs> Praise God. I'm not going to preach that sermon yet. I'm coming back there. We are at this point of the year, year to date with our budget, because of God's abundant blessings and your generosity, we are $191,000, you'll see in your bulletin, ahead of our budget year to date. God is good. God is good. And because of that, you've heard of the missionaries we support, some 32 and a growing number of missionaries that we're able to support all around the world because of how much God's blessing, because of how much we are all in. And within that, our ministries go. Our ministries don't slow down. Our ministries move. And BCS, our Black Hawk Christian School, is one of those ministries. And we are celebrating a 992 re-enrollment rate at Black Hawk Christian School. Now, if you don't know what that means, that's big. That's huge. That is unheard of in that kind of a world, and I think it, it should exemplify what the church should look like in so many ways that a lot of times our front door gets really big and people come, but they don't stay because the back door gets big. I think our re-enrollment rate in church should look a lot like BCS's re-enrollment rate in our school. I love that that is there. By the way, the girls won state in girls volleyball this year. Another big thing. I could go through a huge list. Yeah. Another of our ministries is our life groups. I'm going to unpack life groups for you today. But in our life groups, just adult groups, we have children's groups, we have young adult groups, we have youth groups, but we have 28 adult, 18 plus life groups that meet seven days a week right now. And so if you don't have one, we have one for you. And I'll even tell you what a life group is in a few moments, meeting seven days a week. Our worship attendance, in case you haven't noticed, has been growing. Compared to our 2016 average attendance, year to date this year, our attendance is up almost 20%, 19% to average just under 1,000 people every week sitting in here, not counting those who are watching online. And my favorite one yet, we see life change happening in this place every single day week. You just saw an example of that very thing. Since August of last year, we have baptized 64 people. Plus four today is 68 people. Can we celebrate what God's been up to? I just love that God is moving. Those are just a few of the things. I could preach a whole sermon. I could spend our whole time just telling story after story after story about what God is up to in this place. Those are a few examples, but he's just getting started. I want us to look today at a collision of physical and spiritual needs that our church has. And so today I want us to look at really two things as we dig through vision for this year, not just what God has done, because a lot of times in churches, our tendency would be to get hung up in everything God's done so much that we just sit there but God has done what he has done so that he can just now start to do what he has yet to do. And that applies to our church, but that also applies to your life. God has gotten you to this place so that he can do new things in and through your life. I want us to look at what we're going to call our future together today, a campaign we're entering into to fund the vision that God has given us to expand and to grow and accommodate the growth that God is just multiplying like crazy. We're almost catching up in some ways to a lot of the growth that God is leading us to here at Black Hawk. And so then I also want to talk about the spiritual side of that where those things come together, which is our mission to make disciples. I want us to look at a discipleship strategy today. At Black Hawk, you see it in your notes, we are all about reaching and equipping people for Jesus, 
reaching and equipping people, all people, for Jesus, one relationship at a time, one relationship at a time. And then the way we go about doing that, we value a diverse group of people. We want to see God establish a diverse community of disciples whose differences disappear in our love for God, each other, and our neighbor. Isn't it a beautiful thing that in a world with such divisiveness, differences disappear when Jesus gets in the center? Everything else fades and Jesus is front and center and all those things that once mattered so much don't tend to matter quite as much anymore. And so I want us to look at those things today. Let's talk about what God is doing. Let's talk about what God is doing. Our future together is a phrase you're going to be hearing quite a bit. You see it in your bulletin. And for some of you, that is not a new phrase. For some of you, that is a brand new phrase. And we're going to enter into that together. Let's talk about a few of the things that God is up to. We're entering into an expansion season at Black Hawk, and I want to walk us through that. Then we're going to look at how all of that ties to Ephesians 4 and us being the church. Let's show you the scope of this project, what God is doing. Let me show you that with all the elements. Back in December, our church set out into a journey together of expanding what God has already given us here. We need to accommodate growth for our children's ministry, and there are several different items, seven items. You won't be able to see all of those, but I'm going to walk you through those. It's all of our children's areas, it's all of our, it's an auxiliary gym, a kitchen for our church. I'll go back through all of these. Eliminating our existing debt, a light project that's going to save us money and help us be better stewards, a foyer renovation project, and then some facility upgrades. And so it's a big project. That's the scope of the project that I wanted to show you today. But I want to talk about three of those seven really goes into the realm of BCS and our children's ministry expansion. And so I want to show you what that can look like. I'm going to give you an aerial view of the expansion. And so you'll see it here, an aerial view of our expansion, which this is our existing area that we have, some of our existing facilities. And so here you will see the new area that includes those three things. It includes a full kitchen that we do not have at Black Hawk Ministries and includes an auxiliary gym that will accommodate a lot of growth, community events, and those types of things, and then children's classrooms in addition to a children's worship area. And so you can see what that's going to look like, the new area added on to the back. Right back behind me is what we're looking at. This is what we set out into in December. And within that, I want to talk a little bit about our children's ministry, show you this picture. This is a sketch, a drawing of what the children's gathering area could look like. And so this will be an area that will house up to a couple hundred kids. We will have two key words. If you're taking notes, you should write these down. A dedicated, secure space for our children. Right now, we scatter our kids out all over the building, and God's blessed us with an amazing place to house our kids. But security is not as high as it could be. And it's not a place, we have some kids that are meeting in high school biology rooms and such, and we want to give them a dedicated, secure space just like this where we can pour into these little lives like we just baptized today. One of the ways, side note, if you want to get involved in this exciting season, is jump in for our summer season of children's ministry. We still have a lot of areas in the nursery and all the different age groups. You can go on our website, sign up for that, see someone at the desk. We'd love to plug you in because it's an exciting time to be a part of a ministry like this where we're going to do things like you see here. Why? Why is children's ministry where I start? Well, I've got children, yes, so I speak as a parent, but as a pastor, I know that if we don't reach and equip these little ones, then we are missing the mark. Jesus loved his children. And so there's a statement I'll give you that just drives me every single day when it comes to children's ministry. And it's this, that more than half of people who decide to follow Jesus do so before the age of 12. More than half of the people who decide to follow Jesus decide to do that before they turn 12 years old. So that's why our kids matter. And if you don't know, your kid matters to us at Black Hawk. Why? Why? Because every one of us matter to Jesus, and we're going to pour into that little generation. People say the children are the church of the future. They're the church right now. Those little stories that you just heard, they're not just little stories of the future. They're stories of God working today and being the church. Isn't that true? And I'm so glad God is pouring into our kids, and I thank those of you who are a huge part of that very thing. The other four, those are the first three, including the kitchen, the gym, and the children's area, are what we'll call our church upgrades. Four of those seven is our eliminating our existing debt, an LED light project, and four-year renovations of facility upgrades. I want to walk us through what some of that is going to look like, but 
you'll see our future together. Now, that means it's a future of our church making an impact here, there, and everywhere. It's our church coming together to change Fort Wayne, to be known in Fort Wayne. We don't want Blackhawk to be known. We want the name of Jesus to be famous in Fort Wayne and around the world, here, there, and everywhere. So it's our future together of how we make that happen, but it's also our future together of all of our ministries together, side by side, in unique unity with a hungering mindset to move forward, doing whatever it takes to reach and equip people for Jesus one relationship at a time. So it's our future together, and that future is bright. Let me show you the two arrows, the two tracks, the two elements of this campaign. This is the most unique part of our campaign. And so I'll show you this image here, and you will see at the top there are two arrows that start simultaneously. The two arrows that start simultaneously represent two elements of one campaign. Our future together is one campaign. It's one effort to fund the vision that God has, yet there are two elements and two timelines to how we're going to go about accomplishing this. The timeline of our school is different than some of the timelines of our church. And so the left side of the circle represents uh, the timeline of our school. And so this is one campaign with two elements, two timelines that we entered into. It's a three-year focus on funding the vision that we entered into back in December of last year, and we entered into it with the left side. This side here, you see they're shaded a little bit different, and you'll get an image of this moving forward. This is an image you'll see a lot of. I'm giving you the overview of it today. This side, we entered into with full confidence in our BCS. Aren't we blessed to have a school like Black Hawk Christian School? We entered into that, absolutely, celebrate it. This side, our children's area, gym, and kitchen, all we entered into in December with full confidence in our BCS plan to fund all of that portion of this project. And God has been doing some great things through that. The right side, I'll unpack that more. The right side, over here, these four priorities that you will see. The right side of this element is our church element that we entered into that we're going to pay for as we go. As God funds the vision, as you give, as we raise these funds, we're going to do this debt-free as we move forward and go through this. And God has already blessed big time. So let me look, point you to the first element, the left side of the circle here. On the left side of the circle, God's been working. Our teams have been hard at work. You didn't even know, perhaps, but we just had, even this last Monday, a public launch with the BCS portion of this for the left side, and we've made great progress on this. God has brought about a lot of commitments in the commitment circles, and we've seen God bless our efforts greatly through a few key areas, through BCS itself and how it is helping to fund this, the BCS fundraising that has and is going on, Renew. When you gave to Renew, when you drop things off on the side of your car and they went and picked those things up, that contributes to this because Renew is a big part of allowing us to fund this vision on this side of the circle, plus some corporate donors that have been a huge part of what God has already raised. And as you see, great, great progress through the commitments that we've already received. There's still a little ways to go in the children's area, but I want to talk about the right side, where we have yet to go as a church. And this is where we are, and I want to zoom in on the right side of the circle where we've yet to go. It's the second element of the campaign. And other than finishing the children's area that I just walked you through, there are four priorities that I want to walk you through in this side of the priority will, if you will. All right, so there is our existing debt, an LED light project, foyer renovations, facility upgrades that will all be our pr priority order. You say, well, how are we going to do this? As the money's raised, how, what order will it go in? That order. And I want to walk you through that very order right now. But this side, you should know where we have yet to go. Those four priorities represent $1.5 million. $1.5 million. We've already seen great progress, as I've already mentioned, towards our existing debt, which was priority number one on that list. We believe in being a debt-free church. I'll talk about that in a minute. But you'll see that we've made good progress there. In December of last year, our existing debt was $491,217. Today, it is $324,830. God is good, and he is blessing our church. And in addition to that, we already have commitments in this three-year campaign for $173,800. So we're already well on our way. We've got a great start within that $1.5 million. And so when we finish, let me take you back to the will. When we finish our existing debt, the first slice, the top priority within that, when we finish that, we will 
immediately, think about this, when we get to that point, we will immediately recognize an annual savings in our account, an annual impact of dollars of an estimated $47,000. The second priority, an LED light project, when we finish that, you wonder, what is that? Why are we doing that? That's the second slice of the pie. When we finish that, you will combine that with the 47000 a year that we will get rid of an existing debt. And that, well, this blew my mind. That's this campus alone. We have two campuses, one across the street, and then this one we call it our South Campus. It's just this campus moving to LED lighting. We will save an estimated between eighty dollars and $90,000 per year. And so when you combine those, speaking of saving money, when you combine those two things, existing debt and LED light project, together that is at bare minimum at least around $125,000 that immediately gets poured back into our ministries, our missionaries, and making Jesus known. That's why those are the first two slices. Some of you said, well, I wanted my priorities to be at the top. That's why those are there first. We believe in being good stewards. We believe in stewarding God's resources so well and doing it to the best of our ability so that one of these days when this project is done, and I believe it'll be sooner than the vision I'm even casting to you today because of who God is and the fact that he is not done, we will see that we will accomplish all the challenges, meet all the needs that we've got listed here, and we'll come out of this as a debt-free church. That excites me. I think it honors God well. And so I want to walk you through the last two of those portions there. The first is the foyer innovations. You say, well, what does that look like? So that's the third slice of those four priorities there of the pie that you're looking at. That once we raise that part of the 1.5 million, we'll be able to tackle perhaps our biggest first impression, guest-oriented areas of our church, giving them some much-needed love and upgrades so that we can represent Jesus with excellence to the best of our ability. So that's going to include some new flooring in all of our first impression areas. That'll include a missional focus within our foyer area where we can highlight who we are as a church recognizing the fact that we support over 32, a growing number of missionaries, and not to count our local ministries there as well. And then a cafe area that fosters some relational environments that will fit some of the things I'll share with you now. Fourth element is going beyond our four-year innovations to our facility upgrades. That is focusing a lot on our worship center. When we get here, we're going to be able to tackle a lot of our venues for making Jesus known in Fort Wayne and around the world. I truly believe that Blackhawk Ministries has the most multi-purpose, multi-use facilities I've ever been a part of leading. It's served us well, these facilities, for over 40 years, but it's time for us to show some love and steward those facilities well so we can continue making Jesus known to the best of our ability in and around our community and around the world here to our extended family that you hear me talk about quite a bit. And I want to talk about one of those extended families for just a minute. I met a guy over the phone from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. His name is Max. And this was a couple of few months ago. Max called in and said, you know, I'll watch your services online. And I said, well, you're in Louisiana. How did that come about? He said, well, I know somebody who's in Fort Wayne, and they just pointed me to your website. I wanted to plug into church because I'm, I'm really ill. I'm really sick. In fact, I'm, I believe I'm on my deathbed. And he called the church wanting to talk to the pastor he listens to. Poor guy. He could do better, we would think. But he called and he wanted to talk to me and he had one question. You don't get this phone call every day. He called me and he said, I want to know, is it really as simple as you say it is every week to know Jesus from Louisiana on his deathbed? I talked to him several times since. He wanted to know, could it be that simple? Folks, that's what it's all about. That's why this stuff matters. You say, why are we spending a Sunday looking at dollars and raising funds? And I've always said church is all about money. That's why. Because people need Jesus just like Max. And so what do you think I said? I said, well, let me get somebody for you. <laughs> you, know, you don't know me very well if you think that's what I did. 
I said, let me convince you as to exactly why it really is that simple. And I was able to lead Max from his deathbed in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Max, if you're watching today, if you're doing well, if God's blessing you today, no matter where you sit, I hope God's blessing you and I hope you're watching today because you're touching lives in this very place. But I was able to lead Max to Jesus from his deathbed, from an illness to know Jesus Christ and enter into eternal life from death where he sat. That's why all of this matters. That's why we do what we do, because of people like Max. I see Robert sitting in the back, and he, hopefully he won't mind me calling him out. I didn't ask. I baptized Robert because he came in, met with some of our team here, some of our Marriage Matters team, some of our staff, was going through a tough time in his life, and said he woke up and saw me on TV. That poor soul. I pray that never happens to you, but that just proves God's ready to work because he still worked in his life. He prayed to receive Jesus, and he was baptized right up here, all because of our Bible Hour and TV ministries. Yeah. I couldn't help but just tell you why all this matters so much and why we're spending so much time. And so within this portion of facility upgrades, it's really going to focus on our worship center, our ability to do things well here, our ability to reach out with new sound equipment, new media equipment, new cameras, new technology. We've got a lot of 40-year-old uh, pieces of equipment that are hanging on by a thread, and it's time to upgrade so that the maxes of the world can better hear about Jesus with all the excellence that we can pour into that. And just so you know, we average, not counting our television ministry, right out 150 live viewers of our services every week. You wonder why I say extended family. They really are there. Just this past month alone, our videos have been watched over 3,000 times just this last month. And so people are logging in to hear the gospel. And if you want to see how far we reach, look at this map. On this map, you will see our reach. Now, we're way over there on the left. See the big, the big pin? These are all the other countries that have logged in and watched our videos. It blows my mind. How do they hear? I don't know. I just know that Jesus said, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell won't prevail against it. I just know that God will make his church grow and be known and the gospel will spread just like this, no matter how good we are or we aren't. But that's why we're pouring everything we've got into making him known the best we can. I love that we get to be a part of that. Let me take you back to the will because when we finish those four priorities, existing debt, LED light project, four-year renovations and facility upgrades in, co in combination with our children's area. When we finish those pieces, our wheel will come together. Let's show the slide where it's complete. You see it all filled in. We will see the puzzle come together like never before. There it is. We'll see a completed project where we're together, our future together, the puzzle pieces will be all together, and we will see, think about this, we will have the greatest venue, think about this with me, at this point, we will be a debt-free church. God's going to pay all these things off with our generosity and his faithfulness. We'll be a debt-free church where we will have the best venues in the history of Black Hawk Ministries to do ministry with to our community and to those children, to the youth, to the young adults, to the older adults, and to the adults that go on past that age group. All of us, a multi-generational church coming together for Jesus. How can you partner? That's what you're asking. All right, enough info. Here's what I know. You have a lot of questions, most likely. You say, well, you didn't fill in this blank or that blank. I know. I didn't fill it in on purpose because, first of all, we'd be here way past lunch, and nobody likes that. <laughs> Secondly, because we want to encourage you to set up some meetings. So how can I partner? How can I learn more? How can I get my questions answered? How can I find out how I can be a part of what God is doing and what he is going to do at Black Hawk Ministries? There are really two venues that we have for you starting today. The first one is I want to challenge you to set up a personal meeting. We have two steering teams, we're calling, one on the BCS side, one on the church side. That's one campaign. There's overlap in who's on those teams, and they have been working feverishly to get us to this point all together with us. They would love to sit down with you, to walk through this with you, answer your questions, and walk you. There's not going to be some hard sell. Uh, it's not, we're not trying to pitch it all to you. We want to answer your questions and give you a commitment card and let God lead as to how he wants you to give above and beyond what you normally give to be a part of this. So I ask you to pray about that. There are three ways you could set up that meeting. First of all, you can go to our website, blackhawkministries.org. This is in your sermon notes and in your bulletin, and it's going to be on the screen for you, blackhawkministries.org slash ourfuturetogether. We'll be having updates on this page. 
You can also text your first and last name to the number that's on your screen, 260-275-7506. You can text your first and last name. You'll get an immediate response. I even tried it. It worked. You'll get an immediate response, and one of our team will reach out to you to try to set that up around your schedule. Or, uh, lastly, you can sign up at the welcome desk if you don't like technology and you want to sign up on a good old-fashioned sign-up sheet, we have that for you, too, at our welcome desk. You can set that up beginning today. Or some of you, here's what I know. Some of you have been praying about this since December. Since December, you've been praying about how I can be involved. And if that is you, then our steering team is going to be ready to meet with you today. If you've got questions that you want to get answered immediately, I challenge you to set up that personal meeting. But if you're in that camp where you've been praying about it and you know what God's led you to do, Today, our team, our steering team, is going to be in the art room. That is, if you go out these doors in the back of the worship center, turn right, you'll go down a ramp where the elevators are on your right. At the bottom of that ramp is our art room, and that's where they'll be. There'll be some signs, and our steering team will be there immediately following the service. We just ask that you get your kids first so that all of our great children's workers can head to lunch. But they will only keep you five, ten minutes, and they'll answer your questions and walk you through that. So that's available to you today as well. We'll also have some large group gatherings that will be coming up in the days ahead if you're more comfortable with that. So more to come there. Now, that's exciting, isn't it? Can we just celebrate what God's done in getting us to this point? And the, that was a mouthful. That was a fire hose. A lot of things that came your way today, lost a process, I totally get it, but I wanted everybody in our church family to know what God is up to and how he is leading us so that we can pursue our future. It's a we thing. Church is a team sport. Pursue our future together. Take those next steps with me, and I want to spend our last bit of time here, though, talking about the discipleship strategy. I want to give you a few things. I want to revisit those words. And this is where I think maybe you can take some personal takeaways other than how you can engage in our future together. What can I do spiritually today? I think that's a pretty spiritual step anyway. But I want us to look at those words. We've talked about a lot of the physical venues, but what happens when those physical venues for ministry start to combine? They start to collide. They start to come together. Our call, our mission as a church is really a lot more simple than we give it credit for sometimes. It is to simply go and make disciples. Go and make disciples. And so your greatest, hear me when I say this, your greatest contribution to our church's mission and vision is not even going to be the dollars that God's going to lead you to give. You say, well, how dare you say that after you just told us all about all this stuff that God's going to do. God's going to use your gifts and your generosity and the finances that he's going to lead you to give, but your greatest contribution to the kingdom of God is never going to be tied to your dollars solely to your dollars. Will it be a part of it? Yeah, it'll be an overflow of what God's doing here, but your greatest contribution to our future together, to God's vision for his church, is your own ability to dig into and to go and make disciples, to grow as a disciple, number one, to grow as a disciple so that you can grow as a disciple maker. And I wanna challenge you to ask that question now. How can I grow as a disciple maker? I'm gonna tell you it's gonna start by growing as a disciple. I want to revisit those words with you for a moment. The first one was releasing. A church that is releasing. That's where we equip the saints for the work of ministry. We equip the saints. It's equipping an army in your notes. That's the blank there. It's equipping an army for ministry. That's what we believe in. That's my number one role here at the church. You, you may say, oh, I thought it was just to preach and because you've got a, a, a big mouth and you can talk a long time at once. It goes way deeper than that. It is all about us building an army for ministry. And I want to challenge you to write down a date, September the 10th. September the 10th. Some of you are ready to be released into ministry in new ways. And we call them life groups, and I'll talk about them in a moment. But September the 10th, Sunday afternoon, just right after church, through lunch, and before your dinner time is our commitment. We're going to keep you for an afternoon, and we're going to ask all of our current life group leaders to be a part of this and invite anybody who's ever even thought they might fit that role. Maybe there's some kind of group, some kind of way I can plug into the discipleship ministry at Blackhawk, then this is for you. Or if you just want to hear more about who we are as a church, it'll be a great day for that. September the 10th, Sunday afternoon. Go on and mark your calendars for that. The second word is reaching. This is all about prioritizing the lost and reaching the world for Jesus. How are you doing that? Next week, everybody listen for a moment, it's so important, next week, you do not wanna miss 
this place, what God has for you. We're going to be looking at Luke 15. We're going to be talking about God's vision. We're in a five-week emphasis on vision. We're going to be talking about God's vision for my focus, what I zoom in on, and how Jesus did this. He reached, he prioritized the lost and reached the world, and we get to be a part of that very thing. So don't miss next Sunday. Relational. We do this through the venue we call Life Groups. Life groups are just small groups of people starting at about three people and going up from there that get together and just do life together, not just growing, sitting side by side in a room like this, but struggling through how to be the church together in that world out there. Or it's a group of people you build relationships with just like Jesus did. We believe that life is better together. Life is better together. You weren't meant to live the Christian life alone. Some of us like to. I'm an introvert at heart, believe it or not. That's why I always said I'll never be a pastor like my dad. Be careful what you wish for, what you say to God, right? I like just kind of recharging on my own. But God said, I've got bigger things for you, and I want you to stretch yourself like the little girl just shared a few moments ago. I love from the mouth of a little girl. I want my obedience to matter more than my comfort. And if you don't have a life group, we've got a listing. It looks like this. We've got them seven days a week, and we'd like to help you get plugged into one of our life groups, and maybe that's the best venue for right now for you to engage in our vision as a church, is to take that step. Then refreshing. Refreshing is a church that builds the church through excellence and excitement. Excellence and excitement. I think about last week, Colossians 3. No matter what we do, we do it with excellence. We do it as unto the Lord. We do, I believe that the church should be the most exciting place on the planet. And if you know Jesus, you've been around me long enough now, you know, if you know Jesus, who is the church? Everybody do this. Now do this. If you know Jesus, you are the church. So if we believe that the church should be the most exciting place on the planet, you should be one of the most exciting people in your circle of influence for people to be around. Does that mean you're always going to have it together and you put your church smile on? No. You're going to have your low moments, but it's, maybe it's through those low moments where God's going to minister to other people and show them what he's got for them, and it's going to be refreshing. You remember that? Everybody go, <sighs> some of you needed to excel. We've covered a lot of ground today. But I want to ask you, how can you be the church this week in a way you weren't the church last week? Think on that for a minute. How can you be the church this week in a way you weren't the church last week? Maybe you need to trust Jesus in a new way. I want to ask you just to bow your heads with me and close your eyes for a moment. We've covered a lot of things today, a lot of exciting stuff. But the most important thing we're going to do today, hear me, no matter what's going on in your head, don't let Satan, don't let the enemy steal away what God's doing inside of you right now. If you don't know Jesus, if you were to tell me right now that I would like to know, I would like to know that if I were to die today, I would spend eternity with Jesus. But you just don't know you could say yes. You know what? I know what God's vision is for your life right now. It's not because I'm that smart. It's because he made it that simple. So simple even children can understand and obey and follow after him. God's vision for your life in this season is to lay your life down and say, I trust you to save me and not me anymore. That is the gospel. It is that simple. So with nobody looking around, if that's you, and you were to tell me right now, all heads bowed, all eyes closed, you would say, I want a relationship with Jesus. I want to spend eternity with him in heaven. If I were to die today, but I just don't know, but I want to know. God looks at your heart right now in this place, and he has a vision for your life. You know what his vision is? It's already been accomplished. It's already been won. He sent Jesus to die on the cross, paying a price for you that you can never pay for yourself because he lived the sinless life that you and I can never even dream of living. So he could be that perfect sacrifice, appeasing the wrath of God. What is the wrath towards? It's towards sin. It separates us from him. But Jesus paid that price, bridged that gap so that you could walk straight into the throne room of God so that you could boldly approach the throne, in Hebrews it says, and ask Jesus to save you. It's as simple as believing he died, believing that he is alive, and asking him to save you, and stop trusting you to save you, start trusting him to save you. Salvation begins where you end. Some of you need to take that step, and you say, but I can't say it like you, I can't be as eloquent. God doesn't want you to be. I'm not gonna lead you in a prayer because your heart is screaming it. I believe it from the bottom of my heart right now. Salvation is all about your heart being fully abandoned and turned to God 
lay it at his feet. So if you haven't been saved, if today is that day of salvation, call out to him and ask him to save you. Say, Jesus, save me. I need you and I give you me. That's the essence of salvation. That is the gospel for you today. Will you take that step and trust him to save you? Cry out to him right now in your words to him. size. I believe someone has felt the stirrings and promptings of God. I believe somebody entered from death to life today. Nobody looking around just between you and Jesus. Nobody's going to come grab you and pull you out of the room. We're not going to embarrass you, but you just need to acknowledge that before God and before me today. I want to challenge you. Look up at